Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com and this is the Sony FX6. I've been using this camera for a little while and I have a lot of thoughts. So let's talk about it. Starting off, when the FX6 was first announced, I gotta be honest, I wasn't super excited about it. I viewed it as a replacement for the FS5, a camera that I bought way back in 2015, kept for all of two weeks, and returned once I tried out and fell in love with the A7S II. Since then, I've been all in on mirrorless cameras, and that has continued with the A7S III, a camera that I absolutely love as a wedding filmmaker. So when I read the FX6 development announcement a couple months ago, I wasn't expecting to be blown away by this camera. Sony would have to do something really special to catch my attention. And surprisingly, they did. See, if there's one thing I've been hearing over and over, it's that while filmmakers are impressed by the A7S III and its capabilities as a mirrorless camera, they don't necessarily love the package that it comes in. Why is the monitor permanently attached? Where are the built-in ND filters? Why is it so hard to mount things? And you're telling me there's a chance it could overheat? I've heard time and time again, filmmakers want a real honest to goodness cinema camera, but with the specs of the A7S III. Give us that mirrorless low light powerhouse, but put it into a traditional cinema camera body. Well, what if I told you that the FX6 is that camera? Would that catch your interest? Strap in. Let's start with the sensor. It's full frame. And while I've been told that it isn't the exact same as the A7S III, it's very, very close. How close? Here's the big one. This sensor has the same max ISO as the A7S III of 409,600. In my review for the A7S III, I called it the new low light champ. Well, it's looking like it's going to need to share that title with the FX6. The FX6 even has a similar dual gain ISO that gets much cleaner at 12,800, but you can now set the base ISO sensitivity between low and high in camera, meaning you can ensure you are getting clean footage even at high ISOs. Continuing the comparison into frame rates, just like the A7S III, the FX6 can record 4K at up to 120 frames per second in 10-bit 422, and it looks gorgeous. 1080p at up to 240 frames per second is here too, and it looks great as well. Don't forget raw recording either. Just like the A7S III, the FX6 can record ProRes RAW externally. But instead of being over HDMI, the FX6 has a professional SDI output, which should work very well with an external recorder like the Atomos Shogun. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Doesn't the A7S III do something else that's really good? Oh yeah autofocus, and crazy good autofocus at that. So good that in my A7S III review, I said that the autofocus made it feel like the camera was reading my mind. Well, don't worry, that autofocus performance makes an appearance here on the FX6 as well. Face detect, eye detect, tap to focus, it's all here and it's just as good as the A7S III. Hold on a second, Matt. So you're basically telling me that Sony has taken all of these specs and features of the A7S III and put them into a cinema camera body, right? Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. And at this point, you may be wanting to buy this camera right now, but we haven't even talked about improvements yet. Let's cover those. First of all, this is a true cinema camera, which means it has all of the filmmaking benefits that traditionally come with one. Unlike the A7S III, which has the screen permanently attached to the back of the camera, you can attach the FX6 monitor at multiple points around the camera body, depending on your shooting style and preferences. Likewise, the top and side handles are detachable as well, allowing you to customize the size of your camera rig. You can keep it large for handheld work, but strip it down for use on a gimbal if you want. Know what else cinema cameras have? Full-size audio inputs. Yes, two XLR, meaning that you do not need to deal with an external recorder, which I'm actually doing right now because I'm recording this on the A7S III with an external recorder recording over here. 
I should have just recorded this, but then I wouldn't be able to hold it while I talk in this video. Looking closer, one of the other benefits you can see from the outside is this vent here. Yes, this camera has a fan, meaning you should not have to deal with any form of overheating. When I tested the a7S III, I found that it was capable of recording a virtually unlimited amount of time in any resolution up to and including 4K60. But if you recorded 4K at 120 FPS too long, it would eventually overheat. In contrast, the fan inside the FX6 guarantees that even at 4K 120 frames per second, this camera will keep right on chugging for as long as you need it to record, or at least as long as your memory cards have space. Speaking of memory cards, this camera records two dual SD card slots that pull double duty as CF Express Type A card slots just like the a7S III. Let's go deeper now. Looking at frame rates and resolution, the FX6 can record all of the same frame rates and resolutions as the a7S III, but there are some enhancements here as well. Namely, the FX6 can internally record in 4K DCI at 4096 by 2160 resolution at up to 60 frames per second. This is up from the maximum 4K UHD on the a7S III, which only reached 38 40 by 2160. In addition, the FX6 can also record 4K DCI externally as ProRes RAW. This camera also takes a page from its bigger brother, the FX9, in that it includes Cine EI mode as well as the much loved S Cinetone picture profile. If you want a gorgeous image with beautiful colors and wide dynamic range straight out of camera, no color grading required, the FX6 has it with S Cinetone. Pretty nice upgrades, right? Well, I'm saving one of the biggest for last. What is one of the most loved features of a cinema camera? Internal ND filters. And the FX6 comes packed with arguably the best internal ND filter available in any camera, Sony's electronic variable ND. Instead of multiple pieces of glass that drop in front of the sensor and can ruin your shot as you adjust them, an electronic ND is one sheet of glass that can get darker. Sony says it's electronic. I personally think that there's a tiny bearded man inside who puts on some sunglasses, but who knows who's right? Regardless, this ND is smoothly adjustable from 1 4th to 1 1 28th, which means it should handle even the brightest days. And you can even set the ND to automatically adjust exposure, meaning your shutter speed and aperture won't be affected as you film. It's pretty magical. Okay, Matt, those are some pretty awesome upgrades, but is there anything missing in this camera? Well, yes, actually. And if you've used the a7S III or pretty much any other mirrorless camera, there is a feature that you may miss. Unfortunately, there is no in-body image stabilization inside the FX6. This sensor ain't moving to stabilize your footage. What, Matt, why not? Well, from what I've seen, there are no cinema cameras from any camera manufacturer that include IBIS. It isn't just Sony. To compensate though, the FX6 does support stabilization in post using Sony's new gyroscopic stabilization system that is also found in the FX9 and A7S III. This has shown good results, but if you want stabilization while recording, your best bet may be to buy a lens with Sony's optical steady shot stabilization, like the 24 to 105 millimeter. Lastly, let's talk price. Now, Sony hasn't told me exactly what this camera will cost, but it should come in around $6,000. And I think that's a very clever price. First, let's look at Sony's other cameras. At only $1,000 less than the cost of two A7S III's, I think you have to look long and hard at the FX6 before you decide to buy it. You need to weigh if the added benefits, like a traditional camera body with all of its connectivity and modularity, not to mention stellar electronic ND filter is worth the price over the a7S III. It's also gonna come down to what you film. If you only film weddings and you want a compact powerhouse that's gonna be amazing for an entire wedding day, I think the a7S III is perfect. But if you film more than weddings, say corporate and commercial gigs, etc., I think the added cost of the FX6 as a true cinema camera could be completely worth it. Now, looking at the other competition from Sony, you have the FX9, which comes in at $11,000. And I look at the FX9, pretend I'm holding one here, and then I look at the FX6, and I'm a bit confused because whenever you compare the specs of these two cameras, the FX6 
is a crazy good value. Lastly, let's look at the competition from other camera companies. Of course, we need to talk about Canon, especially their C70. I actually have another video I'm coming out with soon that will give you a deep dive comparison between these cameras, but suffice to say, I think the FX6 offers a good amount of upgrades over the C70 for not much more than that camera's asking price. So in conclusion, I am significantly more excited about the FX6 than I was when it was first announced. And as someone that loves the A7S III, it's easy for me to love this camera as well. In fact, thinking about it now, the only people that may not be super excited about this camera coming out are FX9 owners, because this camera does a lot of what the FX9 does for significantly less money. I need to call my FX9 shooting friends and make sure they're okay. With that, thank you so much for watching this video all about the Sony FX6. If you want to hear more of my thoughts about cameras, I will link to my Sony a7S III review in the description down below. It would also be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see even more camera videos in the future. Lastly, if you happen to be a wedding filmmaker like me, you probably want to book more couples and film more weddings. To help you out with that, I've created a free guide that's going to walk you through some practical steps that you can take right now in your business to book more couples and film more weddings. It's a completely free gift to you. You can download it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.